Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, my name is Greg Forrest. I'm the director of a team called AI Foundations uh, within Lockheed Martin. And today, uh, we're going to be talking about enabling trustworthy AI across the enterprise. So this is actually my uh, second time at the Ash Carter Exchange. Uh, it's really fantastic to be back here uh, talking with a whole bunch of different innovative companies and innovative people. Uh, just a really fantastic event and, and expo. So I don't think uh, I need to talk too much, hopefully, about Lockheed Martin. We're a pretty big company. We're uh, fairly well known. Uh, we make some of the most complex products on Earth, design, build, and deliver those to the United States Department of Defense in support of national security uh, in our warfighter. And more increasingly, those products are being enabled by artificial intelligence. And beyond that, we're also applying AI into our own business transformation and our own business initiatives, right? So how can we use artificial intelligence to uh, do what we do internally at Lockheed from the business operations, supply chain management, HR, finance, and do that more effectively and more efficiently? So we're looking at both ways and how we do that. I have the privilege of running a centralized team within Lockheed Martin that supports thousands of AI and ML practitioners across our business. And I think that structure in how we are actually working to scale, not only across our business, but for the Department of Defense is really, really key uh, to actually making this successful, right? And so we have a centralized team that pr provides centralized hardware and software infrastructure support. And then we keep our domain expertise, our key talent sitting on our programs where they're embedded, they understand signal intelligence, they understand ISR, and you combine that with centralized infrastructure and tools to build AI capabilities. And that's how we really get to see scale at Lockheed Martin. And so very similar to the last talk, I do briefly want to touch upon the White House executive order. So back in October of 2023, the White House came down with an executive order on uh, safe, secure, trustworthy AI. I'm sure most people in this room are, are pretty aware of that. Uh, it was a large executive order. There are many layers and complexities to that. Um, but when I look at that from the lens in the frame of aerospace and defense, what it really means for us is developing AI and the processes for developing AI such that we are transparent and we can build these in automated and in repeatable ways. Uh, and that's really important to ensure that we mitigate the risks of actually deploying AI into the field for our warfighter that we're doing right now. Right, so when I say risks, you can think of things like uh, data bias, right? How do we check for bias in our data? Um, how do we ensure that we are, how do we ensure that we're looking at uh, things like adversarial AI and ensuring that these things can't be spoofed? How do we ensure that we can do tests and evaluation, right? We can't just deliver these into a relevant operational environment and hope that it works, right? We need to do tests and evaluation. We need to do model monitoring. We need to understand if these models are drifting. And if they are, how do, we, how do we update them in a robust, repeatable way? And so we're thinking about you know, all of these things, and it's not just about the capability that we're providing, right? So what I love about this expo and what we're doing here is we've got a whole bunch of innovative companies that are all working to provide capability to the warfighter. And that competition is really important, and we love the competition in that space. We want to compete in ISR. We want to compete in signal intelligence. We want to compete in, sig in reinforcement learning. We want to do all of that. But what's most important for us at Lockheed is that we own the process and the know-how on how we actually deliver that. So having robust, automated, repeatable ways in which we deliver AI is just as important as the actual capability that we're delivering to the warfighter. And so, the White House executive order came out in October of 2023. We've been thinking about this problem since early 2000, right? Um, and so with that, we developed a program and dedicated significant resources to developing what we call Lockheed Martin AI Factory. So AI Factory is our secure end-to-end -end modular, modular ecosystem to train and deploy and then sustain these systems in the field. And that's that critical loop of gathering feedback, gathering data, from the field and then being able to redeploy uh, as rapidly as possible and then doing that in ways um, that are repeatable, automated, and transparent that we can show our customers how we do this. 
also included as part of AI Factory in the last year and a half with the advent of ChatGPT. That's probably that that word has probably been said about 5,000 times at this conference. But you know, obviously, foundation models uh, are a big part of what we're doing in incorporating open source large language models into AI Factory as part of what we call our foundation models platform. So you can take open source, the best of open source, and you can do RAG as a service. You can fine tune these models as part of our MLOps platform. And when I look at the landscape of the use cases that we are delivering, whether that's to our Department of Defense customer or internally to Lockheed, we think that a majority of this is going to be covered by um, what we can do in the open source and then ultimately with you know, fine tuning and ragging these models. We are developing some smaller large language models. We are going out to industry and some commercial tech and using the latest and greatest there. But when you, if you were to draw a bell curve over that, um, I think that we can cover a lot of what we do with, with open source large language models. And we have all of that included in part as, as part of what we're doing uh, in AI factoring. So let me talk about what makes this a little bit different, I think, than maybe what you have seen previously, maybe at this conference or in other places. And I'm gonna start with Composable. For us, the reason that we put this together is, uh, first I wanna explain that this is, a, this is a platform and a tool for AI ML practitioners. So I talked about, we are supporting literally thousands of AI ML folks across the business at Lockheed Martin. And so for us to not be vendor locked into a single uh, entity is really, really important to us. So we put together the best of breed of open source, uh, commercial off the shelf. So we do buy some licenses as part of this platform. And there are some unique Lockheed Martin capabilities that are included in this as well. Um, things like model registry, um, some of the security aspects, some of the VMV and model monitoring components as well. What we found at Lockheed is that uh, we have teams of varying uh, degrees of um, implementation of AI. So some teams are very far in their journey. Some teams are just beginning. Some teams need a, a turnkey solution for how they develop AI. And some teams just need a labeling solution. Some teams just need a, how do I train across a distributed large GPU cluster that we have in the business? And so modularity to this platform is also really, really key. It's not, hey, you have to take this whole monolithic piece of software and use it. It's, hey, your team needs this aspect of the AIML lifecycle. We'll provide you the tools, the resources, and actually the people to go help do that. And that's another key piece of this that I want to point out as well. It's not just about the technology. Everyone's going to talk about their technology. It's about the structure and the organization that you put around that technology that actually enables this to happen at scale. So we can take this platform, we can transfer it to the edge. Um, most recently, we've uh, deployed AI Factory and small form factors, an HPE edge line. It's about a 50 pound box, fits in an overhead compartment in an airplane. We can take our entire MLOps platform. You can retrain at the edge with our MLOps platform, go deploy on something even smaller, like an Orin board uh, or a Jetson, and then go do inference on whatever your edge platform is. So we're doing this in the cloud. We're doing this in Lockheed Martin internal um, data centers, and we're doing this all the way out at the edge for our customers now. Uh, like I said, open source is really a, a key underpinning of what we're doing here. It's not all open source, but a lot of what we're doing is curating best of breed. And we spent the last four years doing that and stitch, stitching that all together uh, in a platform that our, that our users are, are using across the business. And so, um, I wanna talk quickly about, in the last six minutes or so that I have, about ethical principles. So we've always had a very strong commitment to how we incorporate ethics into what we do. Um, we were the first to adopt the DOD ethical principles. We're working with NIST, uh, like the previous group that was just up here as well, uh, and looking at all of those requirements. And AI Factory is the way in which we actually implement. So we can talk about governance, we can talk about standards and we have governance. We have an AI executive steering committee. We have subcommittees around ethics and supplier engagement and all of these things. And governance is great, but at the end of the day, you need to get those requirements into the hands of the folks that have hands on keyboard and are developing artificial intelligence. And AI factory is the way in which we do that. So for example, when you look at the five AI um, ethics principles from the United States DOD, traceable, reliable, responsible, uh, ethical, or, or equitable and governable, 
you can see the different components, and this is not everything, it's just a very high level snapshot, but you can see the different components of how AI Factory aligns with those, with those components. As an example, uh, machine learning pipelines and data pipelines are really, really critical. So understanding the lineage of how you built your model and then showing that to our customers. So when we do collect data, retrain, we have full lineage over what we've done. So we can show you how we've augmented the data. We can show you how we've augmented the model. Uh, we can show you the hyperparameters that we've changed as we've developed that model. We can do all of that as part of AI Factory. That's just one example. I don't have time to go through the rest uh, in 15 minutes, but how we, how we actually get to traceability, right? Which is one of the ethical principles that we're working to implement. So um, along with governance and structure, the actual tooling is really important for how we implement this. Um, I wanna end with uh, a quick video for you guys to show how Lockheed Martin is actually taking the breadth on, in, of what we can do across multiple domains. And so one of the strengths of our company is that we are, uh, we are very large and we do have a lot of strengths and a lot of breaths across multiple domains, air, land, sea, space. And in this demonstration, uh, there's a lot of actual deployments in the programs of record. This is just the demonstration that we did uh, where we've actually combined artificial intelligence, our 5G.mil communications program, and edge processing. So we're partnering with folks like NVIDIA and Red Hat um, to actually build orchestration for our payloads at the edge. So we build a model with AI Factory, we go and deploy it at the edge, and then we can orchestrate those models, spool up and down those models, we can orchestrate them in a swarm of UAVs, um, and we can do that with the partnerships that we've created and with our AI factory program. So I'll take the last couple minute or a minute or so, and I'll play um, this video and how we've incorporated all of that. And by the way, uh, we rolled out that edge line, that HPE edge line box with AI factory. Uh, we uh, saw some things in the field that we had not trained our algorithm on. We retrained out in the field and then redeployed back to a stalker UAV that has a very small, uh, in this case, it was an Orin uh, board on it. And so that's, that's what I'll show you in this video. Awesome, so uh, I wanna thank everyone for your time. I just wanna say, uh, so, so we have a strong commitment to developing and delivering trustworthy artificial intelligence and AI Factory is the way in which we are, we are doing it. Um, you can come visit us at our booth. JC, what's the booth number? 158. Uh, you can come visit us at 158, learn more about what we're doing with AI Factory and how we're actually deploying uh, into programmers of record for the Department of Defense. Um, thank you very much for your time. Happy to take questions afterwards.